Thank you very much, Tony Norris, for sharing your inspiring country music with us. We can't wait to see more of you soon. Hello, and welcome to From Cow to Cowboy. My name is Marieke Peters. And I'm Maria de la Fuente. Today, we're taking a closer look at the lives of real northern Arizona cowboys. Our best reporters are out in the fields to discover what it's like to be a cowboy. To begin with, as a cowboy, you need to make a living. Our reporter Cheyenne is at the Babbitt Range to follow some real cowboys and their daily routines. Howdy cowboys, welcome to Babbitt Ranch, Northern Arizona, south of the Grand Canyon. We're here to learn all about becoming a real cowboy. The first step is to take a look inside the life of a horse riding cow puncher. Let's go meet the cowboys behind the cattle. This is Baldy Ivy, a Northern Arizona country cowboy working at Babbitt Ranch. My grandfather was a cowboy and they raised me. My grandparents raised me, so I've been around this all my life. And I'm 69 years old. I've lived in cities and I've been around the country a bit and I just haven't found anything that can compete with this. The ranchers take care of their animals first thing in the morning and everyone in the family must help. Meet Rebecca. I'm feeding these calves because they lost their mother, so we need to take care of them. All right, here we go. The next thing that we're going to do is, is we're going to go out and get the horses out of the horse pasture. There's about 60 head of horses out there that uh, we're going to need to bring in here so that the men can catch their horse for the next day. The purpose of the wrangling is to find just the right horse so they can gather the cattle to be branded. This is the cowboy's morning ritual and I had the chance to be a part of it. After wrangling the horses that were in the field, they give them a good cleanup. They brush up the dust and use a horse rasp to file the hooves. Will and Wyatt work on the ranch daily. They will tell us why they create a rope corral. Just to hold the horses in a small area so the boss can rope the horses that we need for tomorrow. After they wrangle the horses, everybody will call out the name of the horse that they want to ride tomorrow. When Baldy comes out here, he sleeps in his teepee. Hey Cheyenne, come over here and help me set my teepee up, will you? I will. All right, the first thing that we want to do here is make sure we got a nice little level spot. Okay, and we'll take this hammer. Give it a try. All right, Cheyenne, we're ready to put this thing up now. So I will grab this, you grab that, and we will both walk the bottom towards the TP, and there we are. Baldy follows a Native American philosophy to have the door facing east towards the sun. So when you walk out, you welcome the new day. After we set up the TP as real cowboys do, it was getting pretty late and pretty cold. So we made a campfire and we sang some country songs. The cowboys wake up at 4 in the morning, and before they hop on a saddle, they need a solid breakfast. That's where Brittany Rogers shines. I like cooking a variety of things. I get bored cooking the same thing all the time. Predominantly Mexican food. I was born and raised here. I like the lifestyle. The ranch is different from a lot of ranches around here just because it is a big family operation. It's not just a job, it's a culture, and it's a way of life, and a good legacy to pass on. We took the first steps into becoming a real Northern Arizona country cowboy. We fed the calves, we wrangled the horses, I set up tents, and I made a fire. From coward to cowboy, I'm Cheyenne. <laughs> Thanks, Cheyenne. This is a great start at getting a glimpse of how actual cowboys live on the ranches of Arizona. After a long day of work, Arizonian cowboys like to be entertained. You've been there to see how cowboys relax and have fun, right Marielle? Yeah, and it was an amazing experience. Cowboys like to sing, play their guitars, maybe drink a little and of course dance. But let's start with their singing. 
Right next to me is the residence of the well-known country music entertainer, Mr. Tony Norris. I'm really excited to meet him and to listen to his stories. I ride no pain, I lead no dam. Going to Montana for to throw the hula hand. Norris's love for country music comes from his roots. He was raised in a simpler time in a small town in Texas. I grew up in a family of storytellers, so I began telling stories when I was just a kid and also playing music when I was just a child. He has been singing and playing his guitar ever since. I'm an entertainer. I get up in front of uh, audiences of all ages and, and sizes and, and around campfires and in auditoriums. For Norris, entertainment is all about inspiration. The source of his creativity comes from stories of the Old West and his own experiences. I think that music has always been very important to the cowboy. And a lot of the work that the cowboy does, he's doing by himself. And if he was uh, taking care of a herd, riding around a herd at night, he would sing to calm the cattle down and, and to just entertain himself. Out in white linen, it's cold as the clay. If music is his passion, what about dancing? <laughs> I'm not good at it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not good at any kind of dancing. I've got to be pretty drunk before I dance. Uh, but uh, it's fun to watch. I love to watch it. <laughs> and after my visit with Norris, he suggested I give line dancing a try. That leads us to the Museum Club a venue as friendly and famous as the highway it sits along, Route 66. Built with brick and wood and founded in 1939, Flagstaff's Museum Club is a great place to hold down, line dance and two-step. This tourist attraction hosts anything from famous bands, local talents and dance lessons. When we got there, I ran into Matthew Reed, who agreed to show me a few dancing moves. Well, you know that I'm not so experienced, so will you show me some moves? I can do that, yes. Okay. Okay. No. Your basic two step. Yeah. You're gonna go one, two, back. This is your. You're just gonna go back and forth. Okay. There's about ten different dances you can do that have this basic step. It's and then your basic the same. turn. You're just gonna spin. Go back in. Yeah. And Whoa. Then you're just gonna keep going like that. Okay. So that's your basic two step, right yeah. there. Yeah. Now, you want to try it on the dance floor? Yeah, that's it. That's hot up. Okay. I just got a little insight into the cowboy entertainment. From <laughs> cowboy to cowboy, I'm Marielle. Thank you so much again, Tony. I can't get enough of your voice. So, where are you playing next? Uh, June 25th at the Coconino Center for the Arts here in Flagstaff. Oh, sounds nice. So now, many of you girls back home are probably wondering where are the cowgirls? Our reporter Raisa found a sport where cowgirls ride and shoot. I'm at the Z-Spear Arena in Flagstaff. Elise and Tina are experienced cowboy mountain shooters and they're going to tell us everything about it. A key part to surviving in the Wild West is taming a horse and firing a pistol. Imagine combining the two. Mountain shooter Tina Beldaki says that cowboy mountain shooting is not for everyone. You need confidence, you need excellent riding skills, you need focus. Probably above all, you need to be able to handle the stress of it. Rider Elise Wilson takes the reins too. She loves to improve her skills, but like most, she had to get very confident in the saddle. Well, mounted shooting was not easy for me because it's a speed event and I grew up just trail riding and doing hunter jumper 
slow stuff. And so going faster was really hard for me. So it took me a long time to get up the confidence to just let my horse run. And it was a great confidence builder for me and my horse. And it's made me a way better rider. Elise says the object of the training is to shoot each balloon as fast as possible. But that is easier said than done. Because not only are you riding your horse, you're out there with guns shooting balloons and you can't make mistakes. You can't shoot your horse, you can't shoot yourself, you can't shoot other people. So you have to be very confident in your gun handling skills and your riding. And you have to be brave and willing to practice and keep your skills current. It's a three-way balance of cowgirl, nature and shooting iron. Coming together in perfect unison, these skills individually must be mastered to avoid serious injuries and it's not learned overnight. Most people, including myself, start um, on the ground and just what we call dry firing. And we practice a lot at home and we practice a lot on our horse without any ammunition. And then when we're confident, then we can start with the ammunition. But you really have to be careful. It's so easy to shoot their ears and I've seen it happen and it's, you just don't want that to happen. So you gotta be very careful and be prepared. It's serious business, the guns they use. In Cowboy Mounted Shooting, we use 45 single action revolvers. There are many different brands that you can use and whichever one you like works for you. Um, this particular one is a Cimarron Thunderer and it's, I like it because it's got the bird's head grip so it's smaller for my hand. The bullets that we use have black powder in them with a little bit of charcoal. When you pull the trigger, and the hammer hits the ammo, it just, it ignites a flash. And so it's just like burning embers. It will travel up to 20 feet. Even though you start as a coward, there is always a way to become a cowboy or cowgirl. One really good way to go from coward to cowboy for me was to get out of my comfort zone. That has been the hardest thing for me in this sport. And I think I might be a little bit of a control freak. And sometimes when you get out there, you have to just let it go. And that will make you a cowboy. It takes drive. It takes somebody who really, really has the heart that wants to do that. Because once you have that, you can overcome anything once you get in the saddle. And now it's my turn to come one step closer in becoming a real cowgirl. All right, so you remember your safety rules. Yes. Finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Yes. Muzzle pointed in a safe direction. Mm -hmm. Know what you're t what's beyond your target. Yeah. And treat every gun as loaded. This is gun is loaded. Yeah. Okay. So, there you go. Okay. Right, yep, get, get it in there good. Get, oh, it's one hand. Got it? All right, pull back that hammer. There you go. It was an amazing experience. I think we're one step close to becoming a real cowboy. From coward to cowboy, I'm Raisa. Good, high five. <laughs> Am I a real cowboy now? What? Am I a real You're a real cowboy now. <laughs> Cowgirl. Thank you so much, Raisa. Shooting that gun, you sure look like a real cowgirl. When you think about Western culture and cowboys, one of the first things that comes to mind is a pair of cowboy boots. So. From Cow to Cowboy could not forget about them either. Our reporter Dylan has just the place to learn more about the craft of boot making. So now that we've learned how to make a living like a cowboy, dance like a cowboy and shoot like a cowboy, we're on our way to becoming a real cowboy here in Arizona. But there's one more thing you have to know, and that's how to look like a cowboy. And that of course starts with the oh so classic cowboy boots. We're here outside the home of bootmaker Paul Krauss, who can tell us more about the iconic cowboy attire. Krauss is so passionate about bootmaking that he sees it as more than just a craft. So I see bootmaking as an art, but I describe it as a lowercase a art. I don't think of it as fine art with a capital A. That's my own little thing that I, that I the way I like to answer that question. More than anything though, it's almost like I like to use the elements of design in my boots, which kind of starts to qualify them as art. Um, I work with themes, color, contrast, texture. So in that way, maybe it's more design than art, but um, it's more art than a lot of other things that pass for art. Every boot has a unique design, which starts when Krauss reshapes the leather.
Okay. If it was sharp like this, it would be uncomfortable for the foot. So now we're going to skive it with my skiving knife. Skive is a word I don't know that it exists anywhere else in the English language other than in leatherwork. Krauss is also a teacher. He gives workshops for people of all ages. I like to say that I don't teach how to make boots. I teach how to learn how to make boots. I was lucky enough to get such a lesson from Krauss and get a glimpse of the charisma behind the leather. You've got it so that the, the tan color is facing you here and you're just doing that around in a circle so that the leather, it never, it never wants to be twisted. Just try to keep it spiraling right. like that. So let's give it a go. So pull it through like that. Mm -hmm. Even though this looks pretty simple, it's actually quite a challenge to keep the leather from twisting. And like so. If I'm going to make boots for somebody who's going to be working out in the, in the dirt and the rocks and, and the Arizona territory, I use a lot more sturdy materials. So I make different choices for who I'm making them for. As a bespoke maker, I listen and I measure and I do what the customer uh, needs or what they've asked for. It is meticulous work that requires patience and time. It's kind of like quilting it. We're trying to get those layers to stay combined. If I just stitched around the perimeter, the middle of it could, could scooch as the heel goes down in there. So this just kind of like anchors it to the layers. People say, I don't have the patience for, for that. You know, they look at me working. Oh, I don't have the patience for that. And my reply is always that this is where one finds patience. Throughout his career, Krauss has learned many lessons, one of which is best explained by scholar Joseph Campbell. Life reveals our character, he said. Life reveals our character. You learn more about yourself as you go along. And I found that boot making reveals a lot about your character also. Not just things like stamina and uh, perseverance, but how well do you handle um, failure? So now we've learned how to make a living like a cowboy, dance like a cowboy, shoot like a cowboy, and how to rock the cowboy boots and make them. But what we've also learned today is that becoming a cowboy doesn't happen overnight. It requires a lot of years and a lot of patience. For Coward to Cowboy, I'm Dylan. Now we know what it's like to live the life of an Arizonian cowboy. We had an amazing experience meeting all these great people. And what they've taught us is that you cannot become a cowboy overnight. It takes dedication, time, patience and passion to become a real cowboy. From coward to cowboy, I'm Marielle. And I'm Marike. Have a great day and enjoy one last song from Tony Norris. Do, 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 do.